Welcome back to Telcotone Radiology. Today, I'd like to take you through my approach to reading a CTPA, also known as CT pulmonary angiogram. This is a common test which is performed to evaluate for the presence of pulmonary embolism, also known as a blood clot. Blood clots are a common cause of chest pain. Patients with pulmonary emboli can present with clinical signs of deep venous thrombosis within the legs, tachycardia, shortness of breath, pleuritic chest pain, and hemoptysis. Certain patients are at increased risk of pulmonary emboli, including those with primary hypercoagulable states, patients who had recent surgery, those with a history of prolonged bed rest or immobility. This can also be applicable to patients um, who recently got off a long-haul flight active malignancy, medications such as the oral contraceptive pill, pregnancy, also COVID-19. This is a actual sequence or reconstruction of a CTPA. My first tip is to change the windowing to make the contrast in the pulmonary arteries less dense. By doing this, we can see through the contrast and have a better definition of what's going on within the pulmonary arteries. Starting at the heart, we can see that there is contrast in the right ventricle and the right atrium. This is the pulmonary outflow tract, the main pulmonary trunk, the right and left pulmonary arteries. And these pulmonary arteries divide into the segmental and subsegmental branches of each lobe. So a good way to approach this study is to systematically evaluate all the pulmonary arteries supplying all the lungs. We start at the main pulmonary artery. We evaluate the segmental pulmonary arteries and the subsegmental pulmonary arteries from proximally all the way to distally. On the left, all the pulmonary arteries are patents, and you can see contrasts are pacifying all the pulmonary arteries, so therefore there is no evidence of thrombosis. On the right, there is an abnormality of the subsegmental pulmonary arteries of the right lower lobe. If you look carefully, you can see that there is abrupt cutoff of the contrast within this pulmonary artery here, supplying the postural basal right lower lobe subsegmental pulmonary artery. Also, in this branch vessel here, you can see a small filling defect. Tiny filling defects are also see in this pulmonary artery. If we look at all the other pulmonary arteries of the right lung, we don't see any other filling defects to indicate other sites of pulmonary emboli. The lower lobes are a common place for pulmonary artery emboli. So after we've diagnosed a pulmonary embolus, our next job is look for complications. Pulmonary embolus will limit the amount of blood that's available to perfuse the lungs. So we look at the lungs immediately distal to the branch that is involved. We brighten the windows so we can see better definition of the lungs. Distal to this vessel, we're looking for a wedge-shaped area of ground glass change which would indicate pulmonary hemorrhage or infarct. In this case, we can see some ground glass change in the dependent portion of the right lower lobe, but there is no characteristic wedge-shaped infarct. We can conclude that there is no evidence of pulmonary infarct that is a complication of this pulmonary embolus. Other things that we can look for is the presence of right heart strain. So the pulmonary trunk is not dilated and we're looking at the interventricular septum. 
Normally the pressure in the left heart is higher than the pressure in the right heart. So we can see the interventricular septum convex towards the right. It is not flattened and it is definitely not convex to the left. So there is no evidence of right heart strain in this patient. Incidentally, we note the presence of a large hiatus hernia. Sometimes it's beneficial to evaluate the CTPA study in the coronal plane. This is useful to have a, another look at the pulmonary arteries to make sure we're not missing anything. And also it's good to confirm that there is the clot that's present on both the atrial and coronal plane so that we can be confident of the diagnosis. So looking at the right lower lobe, it's because this is where we diagnose the pulmonary emboli on the axial sequence. Again, we see that there is contrast opacifying the segmental pulmonary artery of the right lower lobe. And as we follow it down, we can see that there is, again, a filling defect in this branch vessel and that is indicative of a pulmonary embolus. Pulmonary emboli, when diagnosed, is a critical finding which should be alerted to the patient's treating doctor. Normally, pulmonary emboli are treated with systemic anticoagulation, which would thin the blood and break down the clot. If the pulmonary emboli is large enough, sometimes we can see it in the main pulmonary artery or the pulmonary trunk. This would stop the patient from receiving cardiac output and sometimes patients can in fact present with sudden death. If you found this video helpful, please leave me a like and subscribe for more videos to come. Thanks for watching.